Servo motors are electric motors that output motion under closed loop control, so they rely on feedback from encoders or sensors, as well as a controller to process those signals for shaping the commands and corrections back to the motor. Usually these are rotary servo motors to output precise torque and speed, often for positioning. So all servo motor systems include the aforementioned electric motor as well as feedback and electronic control of some form. Servo motors work for machine axes that need to make complex moves or position loads with really high precision. Servo motors can also run at zero RPM while holding torque to keep a load in a set position, if that's the goal. Note that manufacturers classify motors for constant speed tasks by horsepower or torque at base speed. In contrast, servo motors operate over speed ranges, so aren't rated this way. Instead, they have speed torque curves that express continuous torque capabilities that won't threaten to overheat the motor and intermittent or peak torque for acceleration. So to pick a servo motor, define using application inertia how much load it will move. Then determine application speed or velocity and how far and fast the load needs to travel. Calculating torque is next, and plot these on the prospective motor's torque speed curves as the servo motor's continuous and peak torque limits over the axis's full speed range. So is picking and sizing an appropriate servo motor complex? Often yes, but there are many manufacturer software programs out there to make it easier. But once a designer has the parameters for an axis and its motor, he or she can set up its drive to protect the rest of the system's components by preventing excessive torques and other problematic conditions. Many servo motors that aren't direct drive have top speeds to thousands of RPM. So to better leverage their full capabilities, designers will often combine such motors with gearing to trade an increase in output torque with lower output speed. Much of the time, this gearing takes the form of planetary or harmonic gearheads, precision arrangements with high accuracy and efficiency. In a lot of cases, gearing even lets machine builders use smaller motors on axes, which equates to cost savings that may even offset the price of additional gearing. Keep in mind that the term servo motor can mean different things depending on the context. Convention is that the term often, though definitely not always, refers to what industry calls DC motors, brushed and the costlier but longer lived brushless servo motors. Now brace yourself, technically DC brushless motors run off AC power shaped into a square wave current that's fed to the motor's phases in a predefined sequence, so called electronic commutation. What the industry calls an AC brushless motor is the same permanent magnet synchronous design just optimized to accept sinusoidal AC current into its phases instead. Some argue that we should forever rename DC brushless motors to trapezoidally wound motors and to be consistent we should call AC brushless motors sinusoidally wound motors. Just remember that brushed servo motors give linear and predictable performance that makes them easy to apply. Brushless motors usually run on applications needing more torque. The only catch here is that their drives are more complex because, again, commutation is done electronically and not mechanically, as in brush types. Industry also categorizes servo motors by their phase count, with single phase types including some brushed motors as well as voice coils and other motor permutations. Some sources classify induction motor-based designs running off vector controls as servo motor setups where the design incorporates feedback, usually from an encoder, to track and control speed and sometimes even position. These induction motors typically adhere to NEMA or metric standards, whereas other servo motor offerings are less uniform as their design routes are in application-specific setups. For more videos like these, visit designworldonline.com.